I'm headed to catch up with Trey and Brianna, whose plans for an affordable life in Denver are being threatened by the very boom that attracted them. Even though they've been in town for over three weeks, Trey still hasn't landed a job, and their free motel accommodation just ran out. Hey, hey. can I come in? Yeah. You mind if I come in? Cool. Hi. Hi, Anna Ria. How are you doing? Say hi. <laughs> You're up and at him. Oh, well, I am. He's not. They usually sleep until like noon, unless we have stuff to do. <laughs> Tell me what's up today. Well, today was our last day here. What kind of stuff do you guys have with you? Like, what are you packing up? Uh, mostly clothes, her toys, and food. It doesn't take me long to pack the stuff because I pack the stuff because I can't. I don't like. <laughs> I can't let him pack the stuff or none of it's ever going to fit in where I had it fitting. And you're able to, like, carry all of it yourself? No, and... no, no, no. I can't carry too much without yeah. putting a strain on myself. Because you're yeah. pregnant, so, yeah. Like, I try to put at least one of these big bags on the back of her stroller. Uh-huh. So what are the options for tonight? Like, how do you ensure that you have a place to sleep tonight? Well, we don't ensure it. We just hope that we'll be able to find something. Can you go to a shelter? The shelters don't let you in. They'll put you on a waiting list. But when it comes to the bigger shelters, they give you a lottery because right now their waiting lists are closed. So it's all so it depends it's all on a lottery for mm -hmm. you right now. Tonight, you don't know where you're going to stay. But in two weeks, what? what... We plan on, in two weeks, we plan on being out of this situation. Like, we have way too much determination between the two of us to still be in this situation within two weeks. <laughs> I'm literally about to skate with this suitcase. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. Do you remember the last time you got on a skateboard? Yeah, I rode the shit out of it. Uh-huh. Do you see the street? Now, when you bust your shit, there's no telling if I'm going to laugh or not. Yeah, this you. is a fucked up ass yeah. road. Samara in house, somebody help you. Hi, me and my family, we just moved here, and I was trying to figure out if you guys have any family rooms available. I don't even know if they have any open rooms right now. If they do, they would take your name. Hello? Hi, uh, me and my family just moved to Denver, and I was trying to get some information. I don't think I have any beds available for tonight, mm -hmm. but um, I can give you the lottery number. We have closed early today due to a staff meeting. It's really hard to find shelter here, just to let you know. Come on. Oh. With an estimated four shelter beds to every nine homeless people in Denver, and with few shelters willing to accept families, options are slim for people like Trey and Brianna. When Trey and Brianna moved to Denver, they saw opportunity for a new life. But a once bright dream has turned into a scramble for a place to live, and even for food to eat. I'm meeting up with them at a soup kitchen in the basement of St. Paul Church to find out how they're doing. You are the prettiest thing I've seen all day. Say thank you. Thank you. Come on, let's keep going. I got three forks so you can share. I haven't been around this many people since we got here. Yeah, I don't like it. How you guys doing? Hey. Good, what's up, man? Here you go. Hey, somebody stole my backpack. You all right, Trey? Huh. You okay? <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm in a new environment. There's new people coming in every second. That's why I sat over here. Why? Nobody behind me. All this makes me think about jail. Like, confined spaces. This is where you eat. This is what you get. Sit down, shut up, get out. Our life shouldn't have come to this. Is it hard to now kind of imagine having to go to a shelter to what it might I be wouldn't, like? I wouldn't, bro. Real shit, I would buy a tent. She would think it was camping anyway. It's called hunkering down. I know where to hide so that no one's going to bother me, mostly. Rent is astronomical. It's, it's really high. We spent one night in a shelter, and I'll never do that again. It was too scary. Like, I would rather sleep under a tree or in a tent or something. How long were you living in a motel for? About a year. And now where are you sleeping? Anywhere I can. Sometimes it's kind of hard when the police wake you up and they tell you got to leave. They'll come by, and if nobody's around, they'll throw yourself away. And then when you come back, your stuff's gone. Priced out of housing, pushed out of shelters, and from what I'm hearing, persecuted by police. 
Denver's homeless population is steadily increasing. To find out what legal options they have, I'm meeting up with Jason Flores Williams, a criminal defense attorney and advocate for the homeless. So there was this incredible opportunity when pot got recreational here. That was spurred by people who believe in rational solutions in America. There was all this promise and all this potential that was taking place in Denver, and you thought, maybe we can create something that would be more enlightened and more progressive. But the city government has supported the rising of the rents and gentrification. What it's done is it's squeezed out the lower and middle classes because they needed to make the way for all these buildings around us. Denver is becoming extremely homogenized, like all gentrified areas are. So here we are. I mean, the water's gorgeous. This bridge is gorgeous. I love it. But the cost that it takes to live in this neighborhood, there's a lot of blood flowing underneath it. There might have been communities that were surviving together along the river, but all those communities have been swept out. So is it illegal to be homeless? Essentially. If you're on the streets and you're trying to survive, then you are a target. In the name of some kind of elite type of gentrified culture that cannot even tolerate the fucking view of poor people. City crews will be clearing out illegal homeless camps. Criticism after video showed Denver police officers taking blankets from the homeless on a really cold night when the temperatures were in the low 20s. Even with increased outreach, people are still sleeping outside and refusing services. This cannot continue. The point of the sweeps is that you get people connected to outreach workers who then get people connected to resources. Um, but that is um, it's a bald-faced lie, and it's just not true. The city has just gone ahead and continued these actions with complete disrespect and utter disregard for federal judicial processes and the United States Constitution. So how are you fighting back? Well, we're fighting back with a class action lawsuit. It's the largest class action uh, homeless lawsuit in US history. It estimates around 5,500 people. Wow. Since you filed the lawsuit, have these homeless sweeps stopped? No. They've just become more secret, and they've worked to push people further and further out. In certain ways, the sweeps have only intensified. If the city has made camping on the street a crime, I want to know what they're doing for people with nowhere else to go.